bros and welcome back to cheap lazy vegan and another what i ate in a day video today's video is very kindly sponsored by almond cow and i'm going to be showing you guys everything i'm eating today so let's get the day started of course we're gonna start with some coffee i'm just making it now and i start every morning with some black coffee random breakfast as per usual i'm having this uh, tomato <laughs> I'm cutting up this tomato. I got it at, well, I didn't get it. My parents got it at the farmer's market and they gave me one. So yay, hi. I feel like tomatoes, they taste so different depending on where you get it. Sometimes they are like so good. My parents had these tomatoes in their garden and they were like the sweetest, most delicious tomatoes I've ever had. But anyways, that's a different story. We're chopping up one head of baby bok choy. And then I have this like really delicious bread that my friend made and she gave me a little bit and I think this is focaccia bread Let me know. Is that right? Maybe I should ask my friend. Anyways, this is like so good So I'm just like heating that up a little bit and then in a salad bowl thing I'm going to add the baby bok choy and the tomato and then we're gonna add some sunflower seeds because you know healthy fats delicious yum Okay, you know how it is and for the dressing I'm using my Caesar salad dressing which is from my bok choy salad no bok choy caesar salad video which i'll link down below if you haven't tried it yet you have to try it the caesar salad dressing is really easy to make and having the bok choy caesar salad is extra special and extra delicious this is like my favorite type of way favorite type of way favorite way to eat salad and there you have it there is my breakfast it's kind of unusual but i like to eat random things for breakfast so <laughs> anything goes really anything goes for breakfast so yeah ideally i would like to probably add some sort of you know protein option in here maybe like a scrambled tofu or like mashed beans on top of the toast maybe some sort of veggie sausage or something like that and that would help keep you full a bit longer but um, this is what i had uh, on this particular day for breakfast and that's all good you know what i'm saying all right guys so that was my breakfast and now it is almost time for lunch but first i'm gonna be making my own almond milk and that brings us to today's sponsor which is almond cow yes guys so if you guys remember i did work with almond cow a few months ago this is such a handy dandy device if you want to make your own plant-based milks this is the easiest way and the best way to do so so this basically is a plant-based milk making machine you can make so many different kinds of plant-based milks like almond milk coconut milk pecan milk cashew milk so i'm going to show you guys how easy it is to make your own almond milk and if you guys want to see more options and you want to see other types of milks being made i'll link my previous video below which goes a little more in depth so i'll link that down below if you guys want to see more options but yeah this is such a great device it's so so easy to use and today i'll be making a very basic and easy classic almond milk and the reason why i'm just making a really simple basic almond milk is because i want to use the almond pulp to uh, make something else after so i'll show you guys that later so first you want to take this filter basket and you want to fill this up with whatever you're using so in my case it's gonna be almonds okay so you want to fill it up to the one cup line There you go, super easy. So once you have the nuts in the filter basket, it's super easy, you just have to attach the top with it. And then you just have to fill this thing with water. And it's really easy because this has like all of the lines so you don't have to like measure separately. It has the line, like the maximum and the minimum line. There we go. And then attach it. And then all you have to do is press the cow start button. Yes, guys. And that's it. All right, so it goes through three different cycles. Once you press the button, it'll just go three different times and then you're done. So easy. So you just wanna take the top off and then you can place it in this collector cup. So now you have some almond milk. Now I'm gonna actually add a couple more things in here. I'm gonna add a few drops of vanilla extract. So I'm just gonna add a few drops. This is totally optional, you don't have to. And then I'm gonna also add a little bit of salt and that's gonna keep the almond milk lasting a little bit longer, okay? You can also add some like sweetener in here if you want. That's totally optional. Just gonna mix that. And then you can just pour it. Yay! And there 
there is your homemade almond milk so so easy and it saves you money in the long run there's also no like preservatives and like other things in here if you just want like pure almond milk this is where you can get it, okay? So if you guys want to purchase your own almond cow, the link is down below. You can get $15 off your order using the code CheapLazyVegan. So don't forget to use the code. And they also have a lot of ingredients on their website as well that you can purchase. You can get like the almonds and you can get coconut shreds. You can get like oats, all kinds of stuff. So you can make different kinds of milks. I don't know why I'm using this tiny little cup, but... Mmm. Mmm. I recommend adding that vanilla. Definitely adds a nice, nice little vanilla taste <laughs> it's actually so good that's how you make the almond milk now I'm going to show you what you can do with a pulp so let's do a little pulp recipe and that's going to be incorporated into my lunch all right guys so the pulp is still in the filter basket so we're going to take the pulp out now don't waste the pulp you guys because the pulp can be used in so many different things you can make cookies uh, which I've done before you could do so much with pulp today I'm going to try to make like veggie meatballs with this so it's kind of like nut balls <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, we're gonna try to make something out of this. I haven't tried this before, so we'll see what happens. So first I'm just gonna place the pulp in here. Yeah, you definitely don't wanna waste this because that would be a waste and it'd be sad. So we're gonna need a few things for these um, nut balls. <laughs> what do you call these? I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna use a carrot. I have here kind of like a large slash medium sized carrot. I've already peeled it. I'm just gonna roughly chop it because I'm just gonna throw it into the food processor. So, so that. I also have a small onion, which I'm also going to roughly chop. And again, I'm gonna throw this also into the food processor. So we're just gonna start with the onion. Let's just add that into the food processor. You can just dice the onions if you want, but since I'm using a food processor anyway, might as well. gonna take that out next let's add the carrots and there you go we've got the carrots finely grated also into the food processor we're gonna add some beans I decided to do like a bean and nut mixture so I'm just gonna add in one cup of black beans into the food processor as well, so that I can just mash it easily. You can use whatever beans you want. So there you have it. Now we've got the onions and carrots and beans prepared. All right guys, so now we are heating up a pan and we're on medium high heat, okay? So we're gonna add in a little bit of oil so we can cook up the onions and carrots. And I think I'm also gonna add a little bit of garlic. Here we go. Got some oil. I think we're gonna do onions first. Actually, you know what, let's just do everything. <laughs> I'm just cooking this up for a couple of minutes. I'm also gonna add in some garlic at this point. I already have some minced garlic here and I'm just gonna add in maybe about a tablespoon or so. I don't know, you can just add in however much garlic you'd like, maybe like three or four cloves. Just add that in and I'll just cook it up. In hindsight, maybe I should have added the onions first. I don't really know. After years of cooking, I still don't really know the basics, so. All right, now that we have this mixture, let's add it into a large mixing bowl. So this is the carrot, onion, and garlic mixture. We're also gonna add in the beans in here as well, the mashed beans. Don't worry if there's chunks. They're supposed to be different textures and stuff like that, so. And then we have the almond pulp that we can add in. It should be around a cup, yes. So about a cup, slightly over a cup of the almond pulp. All right, so now we're gonna need to flavor our mixture. I have pepper. Let's add in half a teaspoon of black pepper. And then we're also gonna add in half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of salt. Hmm, I wanna add something else. We're also gonna add in half a teaspoon of onion powder. Let's also add in some nutritional yeast. I'm gonna do two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Again, I'm literally just winging it, guys, so feel free to do whatever you want, <laughs> okay? And I also wanna add some chili sauce. This is like a Heinz chili sauce. It's kind of like tomato ketchup. I don't know like what the real difference is, but I'm gonna add two tablespoons of this. I feel like it's like a slightly spicy ketchup. <laughs> Yeah, it pretty much tastes like ketchup. Anyway, let's mix this. 
Mix, mix, mix. Mm. So because of the moisture that's already in the pulp, it's gonna help like combine it and bring it together. But we might need to add a little something else to really make it stick together. And I'm just gonna give it a little taste. Mmm, mmm, well it tastes great. All right, so one more little thing I'm gonna add, some oat flour. Um, you can use regular flour or whatever flour. So you know what, let's do two tablespoons. I think two tablespoons would work. All right, let's mix it together. Ooh, yes. Yes, it's coming together. This is all very exciting. All right, so you guys can see it's kind of come together nicely. It's like a nice batter. A batter? No, a nice, is it a batter? I don't know. Anyway, nice mixture. Mm -mm -mm. Just a little bit more salt, just in case. Just a little bit more salt. And then now we can shape them into balls. I'm gonna make these into nice balls and then place some of them in the oven. I have the oven preheating at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna leave a few and I'm just gonna pan fry a few so I can have it for lunch because I'm pretty hungry and I don't wanna wait for the oven. Okay. All right guys, so you know the drill, right? So just take the mixture and shape them into these little balls. And I think the mixture made about 20 balls. And I bake these at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes and then flip them over and bake them for another 10 minutes. And they turned out like this. They actually turned out super well in the oven. I do recommend baking them in the oven or the air fryer because pan frying them it was not as firm so baking them makes them so much more firm and just like easier to work with so if you have the time just bake them okay so they turned out like this they were so good and uh they just kind of go well with anything you can throw it into obviously like spaghetti and meatballs put them into subs sandwiches and whatever you want to add a little bit of protein and fat to and make your meal a little bit more filling these are perfect if you are in a hurry, of course you can pan fry them. I just add a little bit of oil onto a pan on medium high heat and then we can place the balls. Next time I would probably flatten them a little bit more so they cook better on the pan. And for lunch, I decided to make some pasta with the nut balls. So I'm cooking up the pasta. And then onto the same pan that I cooked the balls, I'm gonna add some mushroom and I'm gonna add some gochujang. So this is Korean red chili pepper paste. Along with that, I'm adding the rest of the Heinz chili sauce. So that kind of ketchupy chili sauce. I'm gonna add some almond milk that I just made as well. And this is, I know, it looks disastrous right now, but I promise it'll be so much better soon, okay? So we're gonna mix this really well and let it come together. And guys, if you don't have that Heinz chili sauce stuff, I would just use ketchup, okay? Just use ketchup, I think it'll work. So I had just a little bit left in the bottle there of the chili sauce. So I just added in a little bit of water, shook up the bottle, and then added that into the sauce and uh, that worked out really well. And then let's add in our pasta. So we've tossed that in and now I'm gonna add a bunch of cashew parmesan. So if you guys need the recipe for this, I'll link it down below. If you don't have this, I think nutritional yeast would work really well, but I highly recommend making the cashew parmesan. It's so good. And then of course, let's add in the veggie balls and then just toss it with the sauce. And that's how I made this gochujang spaghetti. It was so good and it was so easy to make. It was very minimal ingredients for the sauce, as you've seen, and it was actually so delicious. Highly recommend. I'm definitely gonna try this out again. And um, yeah, it was so good. So what I did was I topped it with some green onion on top. And I also decided to have a side of broccoli with it because I needed some veggies. So I just like cooked up a little bit of broccoli and I'm gonna have that uh, with my lunch. And there's my lunch. Honestly, watching this footage makes me wanna make this again. It is so good. Anyways, after lunch, I decided to have some bubbly sparkling water. You guys know my obsession. I'm having the strawberry flavor. This is so good and so refreshing after a meal. Hello friends, it was a lovely day or it is a lovely day. I just went out for a little walk. I had to run some errands and then I went to a coffee shop and I had a little coffee, did a little bit of work and now I'm back. And uh, it's not 
really dinner time yet it's a little early but i am a little peckish so i'm gonna make myself a little snack to uh, tide me over until dinner so let's see let's see what i have Random snack time, let's add some frozen edamame into a small bowl. I'm gonna microwave this with a little bit of water just to thaw it out, uh, cook it, just make it not be frozen anymore. <laughs> and then I'm gonna chop up some mini cucumbers and add them into another bowl. And along with that, I'm gonna add in some seaweed salad, which I just had in my fridge. And once the edamame is done, I rinsed it in cold water because I didn't want it to be like hot or warm. And then I added that into the bowl as well, along with some coconut aminos, which is kind of like a sweetened soy sauce. It's like super good. And then I just mix this well. And that's it. That's my random snack. It's like a salad, but like not. And it's like so good. I know it's weird, but it's so good. And now it's dinner time. I'm going to make some teriyaki tacos. I took some red split lentils. I put them in a bowl with some water and I let that soak while I do everything else. So I have this like Shanghai bok choy this time. Uh, that's just what I had in the fridge. I washed that up and I'm gonna just cook that on a pan. And to season them, I'm just gonna add a little bit of garlic salt. And once the bok choy is cooked, I'm just gonna set that aside and I'm using the same pan to cook up the lentils. I did rinse the lentils out and I drained the water and I'm going to add the lentils into the pan along with some more water. So I'm going to add the same amount of water as the amount of lentils I have and going to add more water as we go depending on how much we need. And then I'm going to add some teriyaki sauce into this mixture as well. That's how I'm going to flavor the lentils. This is just a really quick and easy lazy way to make these lentils. So you basically wanna mix this well and just make sure that it doesn't get too dry. If it does, add some more water. These lentils are going to drink up the water, okay? So you need to add quite a bit of water to allow it to cook, but you don't wanna add too much because then it's gonna be too watery and like mushy and stuff. So I cooked these for about, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes or so until the red lentils were completely cooked. In the meantime, we can prepare our taco shells. So I'm just using these flour tortillas and I'm just kind of heating them up on a pan. Now we have the taco shells ready. Let's make our random tacos. So we are placing the cooked bok choy in the tacos. And then we're gonna place our teriyaki lentils, which have completely cooked and soaked up all the water. I'm gonna top these tacos with some green onion and some vegan kimchi. Yes, guys, I added some kimchi on the tacos, which added something extra special. If you guys need a vegan kimchi recipe, I'll link one down below. Highly recommend, highly, highly recommend. As if this wasn't random enough, I'm gonna add some vegan mayo drizzle on top, and I'm also gonna drizzle a little bit of sriracha, mainly for the aesthetic purpose, but I mean, yeah. There's my random tacos. So yeah, these were my super random, whatever I have sort of teriyaki tacos. It was actually really good. The teriyaki sauce adds a really nice, you know, salty sweetness. And of course the kimchi on top is so good and adds so much flavor. I think I still prefer my Korean barbecue tacos, which I believe I have a recipe for on my Instagram page uh, through my IGTV. And I'll link it down below if I can, okay? This video was filmed a few days after Korean Thanksgiving or mid-autumn festival. So I had these Korean desserts that are really traditional. It's called songpyeon and they're like rice cake desserts with a nice sweet filling in the inside. They're really yummy. So I'm having that with some of that homemade almond milk. That was my dessert. It was super good. And yeah, I hope you guys get to try some of this songpyeon because it's super yum. All right, you guys, so that was my dinner. It was so good. I love me some random tacos. I love to make like fusion-y tacos, like Korean style tacos or like teriyaki tacos. So, so good. I just threw in whatever I had. So that was delicious. I hope you guys try that out. Anyways, I'm full, but I'm not like too crazy stuffed, which is good because I'm going on a bike ride. Yes, my friends, I'm going on a bike ride. I have not ridden a bike in many years, so I have no idea how this is gonna go. <laughs> Wish me luck. Okay, wish me luck. The weather just has been so nice lately and um, even though it's October and usually in October it gets pretty cold here, um, but recently it's been really nice. So I'm taking advantage of that 
and uh, yeah going for a bike ride so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down below what your thoughts were and if you try any of these recipes let me know and thank you so much to almond cow for sponsoring today's video once again link is down below guys for you to get 15 dollars off your almond cow so you can milk your own almonds at home use the code cheat lazy vegan to get the 15 dollars off and thank you so much for watching guys if you haven't subscribed yet don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video